Galatians 6, I want to read verse 9. And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Most dropouts don't do very well in life. They struggle at finding a job that prevents them from getting a college education. And even to get a GED is quite difficult for a lot of dropouts. On the same hand, a lot of us, most of us tonight know some spiritual dropouts. They don't do well in their spiritual life. They struggle with their purpose in life. And uh, they struggle with finding their proper place in life. A spiritual dropout never seems to be happy. They never seem to understand or come to realize this great gift that God has given us in His Son, Jesus Christ. And therefore, it's very easy for the devil to trip them up and get them off uh, on a way of their own. And so I want us to look tonight at some of the hazards of being a spiritual dropout, and the biggest one is hell. It amazes me that somebody can come to the point in their life where they realize they need Jesus Christ as their personal Savior, and they accept Him as Lord and Savior, and they go on living their lives for a while and they're excited and God does some great things in their life. And then for whatever reason, they begin to get cold. They begin to kind of fizzle out, if you will. And before long, they'll miss a service here and miss a service there. And then before it's all over, you don't see them anymore and you can't get them back. Could that happen to any of one of us here tonight? It could. But that's why we have to guard our salvation with everything that we've got. Let me give you some examples of spiritual dropouts. Jonah was a prophet that became a spiritual dropout when God wanted to send him back to Nineveh. He absolutely could not understand why he would even think about going to Nineveh. He didn't want no part of that. He just felt Nineveh was an absolute lost cause. And so he tried to skip out on God and go to Tarsus. And you know the story. He ended up in the belly of a great fish. And finally, he repented and was able to finish his course. But for a while, Jonah was a dropout. He was a dropout. Then I think of people, uh, somebody like Elijah. He became a spiritual dropout because of a combination of exhaustion. He exhausted himself. He was lonely and he had a lot of fear. I mean, they, he, he had an evil king and queen after him. And what did he do? He sat under a juniper tree and would to God that I would die. He just gave up. And he complained that he was the only one doing anything for God. And God showed him how he was wrong on that one too. God showed him, told him of the people that he had has never bowed the knee to false gods. Well, then there's John Mark in the New Testament. At first he was a spiritual dropout, but later he returned to do the job that he was sent to do, and he became very profitable and efficient in his service to the Lord. Well, what are some of the causes of dropout? One big one, folks, is weariness. I see this a lot in pastoral ministry. Pastors are dropping out of the church and they're giving up their church simply because they're just flat out exhausted. They have a hard time getting people to do anything for Jesus, and uh, they, they rarely see results in their ministry. And uh, a lot of it, there's others uh, uh, calling them out on everything that goes wrong, and they get so tired and frustrated, they get burnt out. And they get exhausted, and they feel all alone, and the next thing you know, they've had enough. I've seen it over and over again. And then there's the difficulty and the struggle of ministry. 
Ephesians 6.10 in your Bibles. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Now, I don't have time to go into that like I would really like to. But finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord. Now, what all does that entail? I mean, you're weary, you're disgusted, you're kind of fed up, you're exhausted, and all at once you're just supposed to get strong in the Lord? How does that happen? I think a lot of times we need time by ourselves, just us and God, We need to turn the phones off, TVs off, get alone by ourselves and get our Bibles and read and pray. And then sometimes it does good just to sit in silence and let God speak to you. I think that's why I enjoy working out here in this, what used to be your shelter house. You know, I, I, I put in a lot of hours out there, but at the same time, I talk to God when I'm out there. Amen. And i got to be careful that I don't make that my little hideaway. <laughs> it's a great place to go pray, by the way. Great place. It's a great place to hear God. And we need to do that. One of the biggest things that I'm guilty of in my own ministry, is I don't like to take time off. I know of pastors that take six and eight weeks sabbaticals. I think that's the dumbest thing a pastor can do. I know pastors left their church for six weeks, and when they came back, they didn't have a church. I remember... um, Bob Eaton, when we were at Blessings, insisted that I take a vacation. Insisted. I said, Bob, I don't even know where I'd go. He goes, it doesn't matter where you go, just take, take time off. And I thought about it for about two months. <laughs> I said, Darlene, Bob's got that condo down there. Bob's my brother. He said, we could use it any time. I said, let's just fly down there and spend a week down there. It won't cost us much. You know what I did while I was down there? Yeah. Thought about the church. Wonder what they're doing. Kept calling back home, see how things were going. You know? <laughs> I said, uh, Bob, has Heinemann... Killed the place yet? (laughs) I didn't say that, Dave. (laughs) Here's another one that'll uh, cause a dropout. Improper desire for success. I've seen a lot of preachers get trampled with this one. I want to give you a little secret about me. I don't care who knows that I'm a pastor. I don't care if I write a book or get my name on the TV or have a TV. I don't care. All I'm interested in is am I bringing honor and glory to the Lord Jesus Christ? That's all that matters to me. And the second thing that matters, it's right in line with that one, am I a good pastor to the people that God's called me to pastor? That's all that matters. And I think if you can say yes to that, you're a success. Amen? Amen. 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 Listen to 1 Timothy 6, 5. Perverse disputings of men of corrupt minds and destitute of the truth, supposing that gain is godliness. Now, look at that. These, These guys, these preachers here, think they know everything and they're bankrupt in the head, Timothy said. He goes, they think they're godly because they've accumulated wealth. Well, from such, 
Now listen to this. This is the advice Paul's given Timothy. From such withdraw thyself. That means turn off Benny Hinn <laughs> and Kenneth Copeland. Turn them off. Here, verse 6. But godliness with contentment is great gain. Are you just content to be godly? If you are, the Bible says, you've got great gain. Contentment. That means satisfied in your role that God has got you in. Contentment. For we brought nothing into this world, and it's certain we can carry nothing out. And having food and raiment, let us be therewith content. But they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare, and into many foolish and hurtful lusts, which drown men in destruction and perdition. For the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveted after, they look at this, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through through with many sorrows. He's not saying it's a sin to be rich, but he's saying it's the love of money that's going to trip you up every time. And I see this happen with a lot of people. Here's another one that'll cause you to be a dropout. An unwillingness to forgive those that's mistreated you. Now, we all seem to have a problem with that one, don't we? We can't seem to erase our memories. I've had people say, well, I'll forgive you, but I'll never forget. Then you didn't forgive. Of course, the memory of what they did is always going to be there. You forget it. Here's how you forget it. You forget it that you're never going to bring it up again, and you're never going to seek revenge. Of course, Satan's going to keep bringing it up and bringing it to your memory. Of course he is. But remember when you sinned against the Lord since you've been saved. And maybe through tears you've asked God to forgive you and you were so sorry and please God, help me to never do it again. Aren't you glad that God forgot about it and forgave you? We got to do the same thing with others. Matthew 6, 14, For if ye forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if ye forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. So if you don't want your sins forgiven when you repent, don't forgive somebody else. Because if you don't forgive those who have wronged you, God's not going to forgive you. Now, I don't know about you, but that scares me. God put that ball right back in my court. And then there's the lure of the pressures of the world. That causes a lot of people to drop out. One of the problems of living in America, we've got everything we want, and we want it right now. Amen? Amen. And when we get what we want, we want something else. It's a rat race. And the believer's got to be very careful about it, or it'll consume you. Then there's the cost of being a spiritual dropout. First of all, the personal cost. You're going to suffer when you neglect God's will. I would like to think that everybody sitting here tonight is very serious about what God's will is for your life. If you've accepted Christ as your Savior, His will is that you portray that to others all around you. That's the will of God. Amen. And if you do that, you're in God's will. I believe there's different levels to God's will. God's will for me is to preach the Word. I remember when I was in transition from... Frank Road Church of the Nazarene until I started blessings. There was about six, eight weeks there that I didn't preach. I thought I was going to lose my mind. Now, you might think that's silly, but I just, I just couldn't stand it anymore. And Darlene got sick and tired of hearing me preach to her. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. 
God's not looking for a reason to hurt you, but I'll tell you this much, the devil is. When you walk out of the hedge of protection, guess who's going to be waiting on you? And the devil and his demons would love to lure you outside of God's protection so they can beat on you. Then there's the cost to other people. Consider those that could have been blessed by your walk in the Lord. And think about your family. And, and uh, they're going to be deprived and even robbed by your neglect. To nurture your relationship with God. I've had very, in fact, I've had a lot of people. I remember when my pastor, one of my old pastors, really messed things up. Come to find out, he was married to three women at the same time. Now that bothered me. <laughs> But it really messed a lot of people up. Let me tell you how it messed them up. They quit. They say, I, I can't do this Christian thing anymore. Here's what that told me. They didn't have their eyes on Jesus. They had it on the preacher. And I promise you, listen to me. If you're listening, say amen. amen. The preacher will let you down every single time. Because he's human being. He'll let you down every time. But you keep your eyes on Jesus, and he will never let you down. Ever. Amen. Ever. Amen. Then there's that cost to God's kingdom. There's one less worker in God's field when you quit. Let me read Matthew 9, 37. Then saith he unto his disciples, The harvest truly is plenteous, but the laborers are few. If you quit, God's out of labor. And let me tell you something. There's not another human being on the planet that can do the things of God the way you can. Do you realize tonight there are certain people that only God can use you to get to? Because you've got the right personality, they're more apt to listen to you than anybody else. And if you quit, they might end up in hell. Now, that's serious. The cost of becoming a spiritual dropout is entirely too great of a cost to ever pay. We can't afford to drop out and fail to finish our course for the Lord. And then there, how do you prevent spiritual drop out? Well, first of all, you got to accept personal responsibility for yourself. Nobody wants to take personal responsibility. It's always somebody else's fault. I was listening to a guy... Many years ago, I used to go, I don't know why I did it. I just got my kicks out of it, I guess. But I used to go down to the city council when they were holding council meetings, and I'd go down there and listen to all the people come in and bellyache. I just sat back and listened. Well, there was one guy in there, ran his truck into one of the uh, city trucks. And I sat there, and I thought, boy, how's he going to get out of this one? And that judge started talking. He said, Judge, I'm going to tell you right now, it wasn't my fault. He goes, you rammed him broadsided. You went through a red light and rammed him broadsided. Why was it your fault? Well, if that truck would have been painted a different color, I'd have seen it. <laughs> I go, oh, buddy, that's not going to fly. <laughs> It amazes me how everybody wants to pass the buck. I remember I had an accident with somebody. It was my fault. And I knew it was my fault. It was a, a, a lady in her car and then me in my truck. I hit her in the rear. Now, how, you, <laughs> that's a foregone conclusion right there. But when the policeman came... He got out of his cruiser, and I was standing there by my truck. I said, sir, I want you to understand something. This accident is entirely my fault. And that woman went, oh. <laughs> And he said, I want to thank you. I said, he said, that's rarely done. You just saved me a lot of problems. Still got a ticket. But it was my fault. 
Yeah, it was raining. To make matters worse, I had borrowed that truck from a friend of mine. Don't ask me for mine. But it was still my fault. It was raining. It was slippery. I should have known better. And when I hit my brakes, that thing just slid. Wasn't the thing I could do. It was my fault. Now, whose fault is it when you sin? Anybody? You mean it's not God's fault? Well, the Holy Spirit could have broke your leg so you wouldn't have went there. It had to be the Holy Spirit's fault. No. God gave us a free will. You got a free will to accept Him or deny Him. Accept or reject. And you got a free will to sin or not to sin. Now we all, listen, you, you might get caught up in something in a moment. You might lose your temper and just say something. You realize, man, I just blew it. That's not premeditated. Let me give you an example. I remember a lady at one of the very first churches I pastored. Young lady. Her and her husband came there. They had a little baby. They said, Pastor, I want you to look at our beautiful baby. And she handed that baby to me, and I looked down at that baby, and I said, oh, dear God. I saw better bulldogs. Now, that's awful to say, I know. And she said, isn't he beautiful? I said, yes. <laughs> huh? Now, come on. You'd have done the same thing. That was really, that was absolutely, totally a child only a mother could love. <laughs> I don't think that's what we're talking about here when we blow it, really blow it. Here's something else we need to do. Respond to the inward promptings of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit wants to lead you toward a spiritual maturity. He's your divine comforter and guide, and we need to be attentive to His leading in our lives. And you say, but I don't sense God leading. Then you need to get back into God's Word because God's Word and the leading of the Holy Spirit go hand in hand. You, you deprive yourself of the Word. You are spiritually starving yourself to death. If you don't read God's Word and pray on a regular basis, you're never going to know the will of God for your life. And you're never going to have all the power at your resources to live the Christian life. It's vital. We've heard it said so many times, pray and study the Bible. Well, that, that's the best thing you can do. That's the antidote to live in the Christian life. Let's pray. Father, I thank you tonight for your word that never comes back void. Lord, all through Scripture, we've seen giants, giant Christians, Lord, men and women that were devout, become a dropout. But Lord, after they saw where they'd gone wrong, they came back and they repented and you received them back and built them up and encouraged them and empowered them and they went out and done something great for you. But then there were some that dropped out that never came back. May we never fit into that category. Help us all to love one another. Help us to be obedient to the Holy Spirit. Help us to read and study your word every day. And help us to pray without ceasing. And we'll give you the praise and the glory in thy holy name. Amen. Amen. Thanks for joining us. Please like and subscribe to our channel. Also, follow us on the Mixler app and on Facebook. Or visit our website, lighthousememorial.com. God bless.